So yesterday, Stargate was announced by the Trump administration, and all of a sudden, my LinkedIn feed exploded with uh, a bunch of people celebrating uh, this $500 billion investment. And it's uh, on paper and up front, the investment looked cool. Um, but then, like, the second that you start digging into this, like, if you spend just five minutes digging into it, uh, it all starts to fall apart and it starts to tick you off. Um, and then so... That's kind of where I want to start, right? Because it's I notice this trying a lot, um, especially with AI things where um, it gets immediately announced and then like no one actually like looks into the things. And then it's like um, we have a bunch of conversations up front around it because no one actually like it's just people get hyped around it rather than actually like looking into the substance of it. Um, and then so that's what I try to do with all of my content is look into the substance of these things and dive into that. So with that, let's take a look very specifically at this situation. And before I even um, got around to this, I figured that this was going to happen and it's already happened where um, Elon Musk himself has already bashed um, this announcement, right? Uh, Elon Musk bashes the $500 billion AI project. Elon Musk fumes as Trump star uh, Stargate AI announcement elevates arch rival. And let let's talk about that. Musk undercuts Trump's Stargate AI investment announcement. Um, so like, Overall, Trump's not happy about this, right? Because it's Sam Altman's April Fool's joke come to life. I understand why Elon Musk is ticked off about this. And I like, uh, we're in for four years of this, I think. But like, so let's um, dive into this more specifically. The bottom line is that this is already an announcement that was announced last year as a $100 billion project. You're going to notice within this that there's nothing new that these guys ever come up with um, when it comes to these things, right? Like, it's... There's just not, it's not new. Um, and then so this, like what Stargate is, has been a pipe dream of Sam Altman for a few years now. Like, so Sam Altman, he has like, aside from OpenAI, these kind of like pipe dream projects. One of them has already just been flat out annihilated and, and killed, right? Like he had like his own meme coin and, and, <laughs> and Bitcoin and like a kind of like a privacy invasion coin. And every country rejected it on the planet. Uh, and then so Sam Altman has been hucking these um, secondary products to open AI for a long time. It's just, I mean, we, we just finally have someone in an administration that is willing to, like, for some reason, buy them. So let's dive into what we're buying here. So we're buying what was announced last year as a $100 billion project. Uh, and never got off the ground and never actually received any significant funding until this announcement, right? So it was announced a year ago. Uh, you haven't heard anything about it recently until now. So what exactly is it, right? They essentially want you to get excited over funding Amazon 2.0. That's the bottom line of this project. Like if this project were successful, that's exactly what this would be, is it would be Amazon 2.0 a facility that houses the infrastructure for cloud computing services, such as cloud storage and cloud computing. It covers the storage, the networking, the compute, the security, and the scalability of, of networking, of neural networks, essentially, right? And then what they want to do is they want to essentially turn this infrastructure into a neural network in and of itself. They want to own this pipeline, this part of the pipeline. They want to make sure that there is a full part of the pipeline, like if they, you have a full connection, that they have a full insertion at a certain point of the pipeline. Makes sense, right? Like, like why would they not want to do them? And then so they're spending $500 million or $500 billion in order to be that full insertion into the pipeline. The problem with this is, is that when you actually dive into the science of this and everything that has come out, over the last year, there's a reason why all of this died on the vine, right? This is just not economical. The bottom line is that it's not in line with reality. We take a look at, we look at like DeepSeek and all of the announcements that have been coming out recently around that, right? Um, and what we see is that for significantly a lower investments, you can do and utilize and pull off the same type of technology as an investment like this would. For if we invest this $500 billion, I fully expect someone to come, like another country to come out and invest a billion dollars and 
fully take over and and beat out our five hundred billion dollar investment within this and get the same benefit and extract anything that we would get as far as benefits within this, right? So that's number one. Like even if this was, they're able to do this. Uh, they build this network. Um, they do make it somehow into a supercomputer um, that is uh, not in line with reality, but they, they overcome those hurdles, um, and then they do that. There's no moat <laughs> than uh, stopping any other country from building and then taking what would be the most advantageous parts of that infrastructure, which would then be the data produced as a result of that model, right? Um, and then with that said, that data is very important, though, because there's three very specific reasons why this isn't in line with reality. So what this goal is trying to do, what, like, Sam, what the Sam Altman and, and his thinking behind this is, is let's um, essentially like this is going to get us to AGI, right? Like if we just invest $500 billion, it's a moonshot to AGI and we'll get there. That's also not in line with reality. Um, there's a few reasons for this. But first of all, like, OpenAI gambled wrong on this full equation, and we're starting to see this come out more and more and more. I think that the timing of this is very impeccable within this, right? AI get, secures their $500 billion investment, and they secure their bag before the bag comes out from under them, and you realize that they have literally no moat. <laughs> their moat is now this $500 billion investment. Outside of this, they are tanking. Um, what this chart is showing is essentially that every other AI provider currently can provide a cheaper model than OpenAI. We now, every other AI model, every other AI provider can also provide a model that is on par with OpenAI. So therefore, OpenAI is in a very bad situation right now, overall. But diving further and away from OpenAI's problems themselves, let's say that they do, again, they solve all of this, right? Like all of this is just a, a, a pipe dream. Um, they solve the challenges, they build this data center, our $500 billion investment, um, and then we're gonna moonshot directly to AGI as a direct result of this, right? No because of this. There's essentially the three walls problem and this particular problem, like what this uh, vision lays out, solves one uh, tier of the three walls, uh, possibly into two, but we need to solve all three of these walls. So let's dive into this, the three walls. The challenges to scaling broadly fall into three interrelated categories, data, compute, and the limitations of next token prediction. Each represents a barrier to progress through more data, compute, and parameters alone, meaning that we most likely cannot get to or solve all three of these problems just through scaling. I can already, we've already proven that we can. So the data wall. Uh, according to a 2022 Chinchilla paper, compute and data needs to scale proportionally to achieve optimal model performance. We know this very explicitly now over the last few years. It's pretty much like a one-to-one um, -one correlation. Each parameter can store two bytes of information, et cetera, right? Like there's like um, data laws that are now becoming laws. So while the index web contains about 500 trillion tokens of unique text, 30 times more than any data set than the largest known data set that's, uh, that's available, <laughs> the internet, the indexed web itself is uh, bad data, not high quality data. So the high quality human created content that AI models need for training has already been consumed. We've taken it all, uh, except for uh, like these small little pro private proprietary sources, they're the only things that exist, uh, which uh, other than that, you have increasingly repetitive, low quality, and unsuitable training data. Dumping $500 billion into infrastructure doesn't solve your data problem. <laughs> like there's nothing that that solves this, right? It's, it's, this is the same problem that uh, OpenAI faces now, and it's the same problem no matter what. If we do solve and we do decide to turn this uh, $500 billion investment into some sort of uh, data, like uh, it's not a very good <laughs> investment for our money overall uh, for all the reasons why I stated above, right? Like chances are someone's gonna get a hold of that data. The data, the data inherently becomes less 
and less valuable, um, the longer that it remains in the world, right? The more it gets copied, the more it's available to be copied, etc. So if we foot that initial $500, $500 billion bill uh, for that, it's just a sinking investment. Like we do the world a good favor. Uh, like if, if we were to actually release it, but again, it's the opposite of this, right? This is um, regulatory reach trying to build Amazon 2.0. So the next one is the compute and energy wall, which this is the only barrier that this problem specifically addresses, right? So the second barrier uh, is training state-of-the-art models consumes literally as much electricity as small cities. And then so uh, this is going to allow Microsoft to build an energy power plant on a, that will be equivalent of a small country. So when OpenAI researcher Noam Brown asks, are we really going to train models that cost hundreds of billions or trillions of dollars? Uh, he's not just asking about money, he's also asking about physics. The answer is yes, sir, we are, apparently. Um, we don't care about the physics uh, anymore along with this. We're just going to dump the money. But so, again, he's not just asking about the money, he's asking about the physics. That's the bottom line that I want anyone watching this to take away with in this, right? Like, we have... Um, kind of gotten used to this mindset that money can solve any problem that exists in the world, that you can just simply throw money at it. That's not true when it comes to science, it's just the way that it is. You can't throw money at physics to change physics. It just doesn't work. And, and if you throw $500 billion at wrong physics, it's still wrong physics. Which leads us to the last problem here, uh, and the very big problem within this, which is the architecture wall. Perhaps the most interesting limit is architectural. Many real-world tasks involve what Meta's Yan Le Kun call the long tail problem, an effectively infinitive supply of edge cases that no amount of training data can fully capture. Current AI architectures excel at interpolation, but struggle with extrapolation, making predictions and reasoning about situations that fall outside of their training distribution problematic. And we assume, and we are making a big assumption, that we can simply solve this problem by, by, by um, throwing money at it, right? By, by, by scaling up. First of all, we know 100% at this point that we can't scale this up. It won't work. Jan LeCun is 1 million percent right with this. He's been speaking on that for years. Like, uh, I mean, uh, there's nothing more to say on it really than that. Uh, it's, the second thing is, is that uh, if you dive very deeply into the Transformers architecture itself, we are coming up, it's more and more uh, not computationally efficient is the bottom line uh, that we come forth with Transformers. Um, hallucinations are built into Transformers. There's no way that you're ever going to get to 100% accuracy with Transformers overall. Um, there's limitations that are built within Transformers architecture itself. I flat out am betting heavily against Transformers. All of my research, everything that I do, everything, uh, everything that I do with regards towards um, research, paid and otherwise, is heavily at this point um, against Transformers. Like uh, re alternative Transformers alternatives, HDC spaces. Um, like uh, other types of methodologies, uh, like swarm algorithms, uh, evolutionary algorithms, genetic algorithms, etc. But all these where OpenAI doesn't have any sort of space and where this $500 billion investment in a data center uh, is the exact opposite of the investment that you are wanting to make. And that's the bottom line here, right? Like, uh, if I were to look at the AI landscape overall today, and I were to look where would I spend my $500 billion, the only logic that would lead me to spending it on this Stargate project would be if I were Sam Altman. Literally, the only person that this is going to benefit or think that this is a good idea overall, as opposed to literally anything else AI created, is Sam Altman. And so, for all of these reasons, it's like you're going to see more and more as this hype dies out that this $500 billion is a complete waste. You're going to see this cycle go through. I've seen it happen a lot already, where 
Right now, we're seeing a bunch of people hype this up because nobody knows what it actually is. And then once people start and actually take five minutes to realize and what it is, then you're going to start getting mad over it. And then people are going to get mad because they feel, feel lied to. Then they're going to take that out on AI more. And then AI is going to be in a worse position overall. Uh, and so that's where I see the future of this going. And so if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.